Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Rob Fleming, the Minister of Transportation and Infrastructure, and I will be acting as your MC today. And I want to get us underway by acknowledging that we're on the traditional territories of the Coast Salish peoples. Today is a very exciting day for public transit here in Surrey and throughout the Metro Vancouver region. Today, Today is about creating and expanding transportation options for people living in the Fraser Valley as a priority for all levels of government working together. The populations of Surrey, Langley and other communities throughout the Fraser Valley are the fastest growing in our province and we must build infrastructure to meet the needs of those families and to continue to strengthen our economy for a low carbon future. I am delighted and honoured to introduce for you our speakers line up today. First of all, the Right Honourable Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau. With us is the Honourable Catherine McKenna, Minister of Infrastructure and Communities. The Honourable John Horgan, Premier of British Columbia. The Honourable George Heyman, Minister of Environment and Climate Change Strategy and Minister Responsible for TransLink. His Worship Doug McCallum, Mayor of Surrey. Her Worship Val Vandenbroek, City of Langley. And His Worship Jack Froze, Mayor of the Township of Langley. And we also are delighted to have Gigi Chen Kuo, who is the interim CEO of the TransLink Transit Authority. It's my pleasure to introduce a quorum of government caucus here today in terms of our MLAs that are present. Uh, with me are my good friends and colleagues, the members of the Legislative Assembly, Megan Dykeman, the MLA for Langley East. Andrew Mercier, the MLA for Langley. Ginny Sims, the MLA for Surrey Panorama. Gary Begg, the MLA for Surrey Guilford. Minister Bruce Ralston, MLA for Surrey Wally, whose riding we're in. And Mike Starchuk, uh, MLA for Surrey Cloverdale. And to start off our event today, it is my great pleasure to introduce somebody who has been a champion for Canada's place in the world in the fight against climate change, somebody who has been a champion for infrastructure projects like the one we're about to announce today uh, here in British Columbia. Would, I, would you please welcome Minister Catherine McKenna to the podium. Wow, well, it's uh, really amazing uh, to be back here in BC uh, and traveling again. Um, very excited to be making this really critical announcement that's going to improve lives uh, across the greater Vancouver area. I also want to recognize that we're on the a traditional unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples. And I want to note that we are seeing here the impacts of climate change, but we know the impacts of climate change are impacting the most vulnerable, including Indigenous peoples and we need to be working in partnership, uh, continuing to do the hard work uh, together with Indigenous peoples because that's what reconciliation is all about. I'm thrilled to be here with the Prime Minister. Uh, we actually don't do many events together other than Zoom nowadays, so it's great to be back. Uh, Premier Horgan, great to be in your beautiful province. And I look across and I see my amazing colleagues, um, many of whom have been advocating for this uh, announcement uh, for a long time. Um, but first of all, my uh, ministerial counterparts, uh, Joyce Murray, Minister of Digital Government, MP for Vancouver Quadra, Harjit Sajjan, uh, my good friend, Minister of National Defence, MP for Vancouver South, Jonathan Wilkinson, who's always fighting the good fight uh, on climate change, Minister of Environment and Climate Change, and then the folks who are calling me all the time to see how we're moving forward on these announcements. Uh, we have Randeep Sarai, MP for Surrey Centre. Ken Hardy, MP for Fleetwood Port Kells. Sukh Dhaliwal, MP for Surrey Newton. 
Uh, and of course we have the mayors, because the mayors have also been calling uh, about this uh, announcement um, as well. Uh, well, look, it's great that we're getting out of the COVID-19 pandemic, um, that we're able to travel again. We all need to get vaccinated, so please make sure you're getting your double vaccination. But the reality is we will get out of the pandemic, but we're still going to have the climate crisis. And we need to focus in the same way on the climate crisis as we've focused on the pandemic. We need to listen to science and scientists. We need to have a clear vision and goal, which is to save the only planet we have. And we all need to be working together, which is why it is so great for today's announcement. You have the federal government working with the province, working with local municipalities to get something big done that will make a real difference in tackling emissions, but of course also improving lives for people. Since 2015, we've been working hard to get things built across our country, but including in British Columbia. We spent over $4.3 billion in over 550 infrastructure projects. But what does that mean? I would say infrastructure is a made up bureaucratic word, that these are investments in building the future we want. That's major projects like the Broadway subway, the Millennium Line extension, up to 200 electric buses here in BC as part of our commitment to 5,000 electric buses, 40 new electric vehicle charging stations across Surrey at community centers, rec centers and pools, investments to help folks adapt to the impacts of climate change. We've all seen what's happened to Lytton. Climate change is here, it's having an impact and we need to do better. Tous les investissements que nous faisons doivent avoir trois objectifs. Ils doivent créer des emplois, Ils doivent attaquer au changement climatique et à faire certain qu'on est plus résilient et aussi doivent bâtir des communautés plus inclusives. That's why I'm so proud about today's announcement. Investments in public transit make a huge difference in the lives of people. It means that folks can get home from their jobs faster, kids can get to university or to schools faster, but also they help reduce emissions. The transportation sector represents 25% of Canada's emissions. We need to tackle this sector and the way we do it is by public transit. But we also need more inclusive communities. If you take Surrey, one of the fastest growing communities, well here in BC but in, the, in Canada, they need better public transit. The folks there deserve it and that's exactly what we're doing today. But we also need jobs. And so projects like today's project are, are going to create jobs. These are shovel-ready projects that we need to move forward on because we're in the COVID-created uh, pandemic, but it's also an economic crisis. So I'm very pleased to be here. Uh, I'm very proud to have had the opportunity to work on a massive uh, project like today's announcement. Well, actually, we have a couple. And I'm very proud to be a member of the Prime Minister's team. We've worked really hard on climate change. We're going to continue doing that and we're going to continue making investments like the investment today. And with that, uh, c'est mon grand honneur d'introduire uh, uh, bien uh, le premier ministre, mais aussi mon ami Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Thank you, Catherine, for that introduction and for all of your tireless work for communities across the country. First, I'd like to acknowledge that we're on the shared, unceded traditional territory of the Katsi, Semiamu, Kwantlen, and other Coast Salish peoples. It's great to be here in Surrey with Premier Horgan. John, today we get to announce good news for British Columbians a second day in a row. Just like with childcare yesterday, Today's public transit announcement will have a real impact on people's lives. A big shout out to the remarkable members of our Liberal team who are joining us today and who never stop working for the people of BC and all Canadians. It's also great to be joined by Mayors Doug McCallum, Val Vandenbroek and Jack Froese, as well as by Provincial Ministers Rob Fleming and George Heyman and TransLink Interim CEO Gigi Chen Kuo. Thank you all for being here. By working together, we will get results for Canadians, and that's what really matters. 
Places south of the Fraser River, like Surrey and Langley, are growing fast and have been for years. So with more families choosing this as home, the demand for good, efficient transit has gone up. And that's why we're here today, to meet this need and to make communities in the region more connected. Today, I can announce that the federal government will provide up to $1.3 billion for the Surrey-Langley SkyTrain extension. The new line will connect growing Surrey neighbourhoods, the township of Langley and the city of Langley with the rapid transit families, workers and students deserve. If you're wondering what that'll look like, this project includes an elevated extension of 16 kilometres from King George Station, eight stations, three bus exchanges and 30 SkyTrain cars. Nobody likes to be stuck in traffic when you could be home with your kids. This will cut commute times and make your lives easier. That means spending more time doing the things you love. Depuis 2015, notre gouvernement a fait des investissements historiques de transport collectif partout au pays. Chaque fois qu'on a créé de nouveaux trajets de transport en commun, on facilite la vie des gens. Chaque fois qu'on ajoute un véhicule électrique à nos réseaux, on aide à rendre l'air plus propre. Ces investissements ont des vrais impacts dans nos communautés. I don't have to tell people in BC how important it is to continue accelerating our fight against climate change. Extreme weather and wildfires are only a few examples of the devastating consequences we've seen recently. Development of public transit will put us squarely on a path to net zero by 2050. We have to ensure our kids inherit a cleaner future. Of course, Investing in a major project like the Surrey-Langley SkyTrain extension is also good for the economy. Today's project alone is expected to create thousands of well-paying middle-class jobs. So we're cutting pollution and creating jobs for the people of BC. These are real, concrete results that you can count on, and that's what our government will continue to deliver. Speaking of jobs, we learned this morning that 231,000 jobs were added to the Canadian economy in June. This includes 164,000 new positions for young people between 15 and 24. We've now recovered more than 90% of the jobs lost during the pandemic. That's encouraging news, but there's always more work to be done. As more Canadians are fully vaccinated every day, more regions are reopening and we will continue to be there for families, workers and small businesses. And we will reach our goal of creating a million jobs and fully restoring employment to pre-pandemic levels and more. Like I said, public transit is at the heart of our plan for a clean and strong recovery from this pandemic and a growing middle class. That's why earlier this year we announced major investment in new public transit projects including permanent annual funding for municipalities. And that's also why today I can announce that our government is committed to funding up to 40% to support planning for the proposed extension of the Millennium Line from Arbuta Station to UBC in Vancouver. This project will save time for people who travel between UBC and other parts of the city. Round trip from commercial Broadway to UBC, this could mean 40 minutes more for yourself in your day. If you're a student and you work a part-time job, every minute counts. If you're a parent, you know how every day is a busy day and this extra time will make a real difference. Alors qu'on est en train d'en de finir avec la pandémie, on continue de rebâtir en mieux pour tout le monde. Et nos investissements dans le transport collectif sont loin d'être nos seules mesures progressistes pour améliorer la vie des gens. Prenez par exemple tout ce qu'on fait pour bâtir plus de logements plus rapidement pour les gens vulnérables. Just this week, Minister Hussein was here in Surrey to announce new funding through the Rapid Housing Initiative to build new affordable homes. He also announced more housing in Burnaby for vulnerable people and people experiencing homelessness. Everyone deserves a safe place to call home. We made a promise to end chronic homelessness in Canada, and that's exactly what we intend to do. 
whether it's building public transit or rapid housing, fighting climate change or creating jobs, now is the time to rebuild a stronger country for British Columbians and for all Canadians. And by working together, I know that that's exactly what we'll do. Merci beaucoup, mes amis. Thank you so much, Prime Minister. Thank you for the Government of Canada's commitment and to Minister McKenna as well. And it's my great pleasure to introduce Premier John Horgan, who tasked our government with taking the lead on this visionary project, building durable partnerships with the Government of Canada, building durable partnerships with TransLink and the Metro Vancouver Mayor's Council. And it's my great pleasure to introduce the Premier of British Columbia, John Horgan. Uh, thank you, Rob. Uh, everyone assembled here today on the unceded territory of the Coast Salish people. Uh, I bring greetings from Vancouver Island, and also I want to acknowledge of all the people that were mentioned, we did not hear about Jonathan Cote, the uh, Mayor of New Westminster and the Chair of the uh, Metro Transit Board, and all of the work that he and countless others have been doing to prepare for this project is really, truly exciting. It is uh, through partnership and collaboration with all orders of government that we make progress in our endeavors uh, to try and meet the challenges of our time. And there's no shortage of challenges for us here in British Columbia and in Canada. We're coming through what has been the most extraordinary 16 months of our lives and our country's maturation as we've tackled COVID-19. And as I said yesterday with the Prime Minister, unprecedented collaboration over that period of time. Over 33 First Ministers meetings to deal with issues, not from a partisan perspective, not from a regional perspective, but from a Canadian perspective. And that has how Canada and British Columbians have been able to get through COVID-19 with relatively few challenges. I want to also acknowledge that the reason we're here today is to again highlight what we can do when we work together. Mayors, councils, citizens, orders of government, regular people saying these are the services that we need to realize our full potential, to grow our communities and make British Columbia as strong as we possibly can. A 16 kilometer extension of the Expo line in and of itself is extraordinary. But what we're going to be able to do and what the mayors assembled here today will be able to do in their communities is not chase growth but help shape growth. And that's the transformative part about this announcement today. As we build out rapid transit across British Columbia, what that means is we're going to be getting people out of cars, we're going to be reducing our greenhouse gas implications, and that is also good news, not just for us today, but for generations to come. Shaping growth, building communities, and doing it in a way that addresses the, the crisis, quite frankly, of our time, climate change. And I don't have to tell Minister Heyman, who'll be up after me, or Minister McKenna about those challenges. They've been advising the Prime Minister and I regularly since we had the privilege of taking the positions that we have. And it's with their leadership and the leadership of countless other Canadians and British Columbians that I'm so proud to say that Clean BC is leading the way in this country. I know we have the full support of the Prime Minister. And as we think to going to uh, uh, Glasgow for the COP26, conference bringing the world together the five million souls of British Columbia will be there with the Prime Minister on the world stage saying to seven million citizens of the world we have to get our act together and it starts with projects like this putting in place transit that will get people out of cars and build a future that our children and our grandchildren can benefit from. I want to uh, conclude because I know there's many more speakers to come this is about collaboration and partnership. We are going to get to Langley. We are going to get SkyTrain to Langley and start to shape the Fraser Valley to be the place that the residents there today want to see and the residents of the future can benefit from. It's again all about collaboration. Lastly, I want to just conclude uh, by thanking all of those who have worked so tirelessly from extraordinary places under extraordinary circumstances to bring this announcement together. We made a commitment as a provincial government uh, back in 2017 to increase the provincial contribution to projects like this from the traditional 33% to 40% to take the burden off of local taxpayers. 
We were joined almost immediately by the federal government, by the Prime Minister, acknowledging that orders of government have to come together. We need to make sure we're not putting this growth and expansion on the backs of local taxpayers. And I know there are three mayors who are going to be getting up shortly and saying thank goodness for that. But it is through working together, hearing each other out, disagreeing on occasion. I know this will become a shock to you, Prime Minister, but sometimes in British Columbia we disagree on things. <laughs> But we do get through it because it's important to hear all of the voices in the community. It's important to respond to them and then take action. Today, the Government of Canada, the Government of British Columbia, TransLink and the regional mayors are taking action to improve British Columbia. I'm grateful to have the opportunity to be here today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Premier. It's my great pleasure to introduce my good friend and colleague, the Minister Responsible for TransLink, the Honourable George Heyman. Thank you so much, uh, Minister Fleming. I also want to acknowledge that we're gathered here today on the traditional unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples. It is absolutely great to be here in partnership with the federal government, the cities of Surrey and Langley, and TransLink. And yes, Mayor McCallum, we're finally making the announcement in July. It's, it's, such, it's such an important step in uh, building back and building fast, reliable, affordable public transit for people in this region, people south of the Fraser. It's a significant collaboration that will expand clean transportation options for everyone. As the Premier and the Prime Minister have said, it is all part of a very important plan to make life more affordable, to plan and house people, to build a strong economy, and to take step-by-step -step action to fight climate change. And of course, today's announcement looking ahead advances the Millennium Line to UBC by funding a business case. That's such an important and critical next transit link in Metro Vancouver. Projects like this are a key focus for me and my ministry. It's a key part of our mandate. We need to advance the Clean BC plan to reduce emissions while at the same time providing opportunities for people in a clean economy. And we know that these investments will have positive impacts to reduce congestion and pollution. The Surrey-Langley line will help serve more than 50 thousand people a day by 2035 in this region with frequent, convenient, and affordable transit options. That's roughly 10 times more capacity than served by the existing bus lines. It will increase access to employment, to schools, to affordable housing and services. It will advance local jobs in the regional economy, and it will provide opportunities for sensible, development, additional development that's planned along accessible transit corridors, which of course will make housing more affordable for everyone. We know we need to support healthy communities and the environment we all cherish. And that must mean, and does mean, substantial reductions in greenhouse gases and local air pollution in the Fraser Valley. As we build back, we're transitioning to an expanded, and more integrated transit system, and that's foundational. It's central to the Clean BC plan, and it helps set the direction and investment priorities. Recent events in our province, the heat dome, the tragic fire in Lytton, the wildfires around the province, makes it absolutely crystal clear that we need to move forward faster on our climate action. And today's announcement is a central part of that plan, it's an, important, it's an important part of the plan, and it demonstrates that federally, provincially, regionally, and locally, we have a shared vision, and more importantly, we have shared action that will produce enduring results. Thank you very much. To, uh, to say that our next speaker is a champion of this project would be an understatement of historic proportions. Uh, please welcome our host, Mayor Doug McCallum, the City of Surrey. Thank, 
Thank you uh, very, very much. And I just want to first announce uh, a full slate of our council is here today to, with this celebration. Councilor Pettigrew, Locke, Annis, Undal, Elkford, Greer, Patton, and Negra. I also want to acknowledge that we're on the traditional territories of the Coast Salish people. It's, um, it's a great, great time. Yes, for Surrey. <laughs> Mr. Prime Minister, Mr. Premier, elected colleagues at Surrey City Council, and especially, and more importantly, the residents of Surrey. You can tell I'm really excited. Uh, in my 12 years, I've never been so excited to be up here. So. Today is a tremendous day for Surrey. We have been waiting a long time for the expansion of SkyTrain in Surrey. In fact, it has been 27 years since the last time that we put tracks down in our city. As one of the fastest growing cities in Canada, with a population now of approximately 600,000 people, Surrey Langley SkyTrain makes a lot of sense on several levels. Every new stop built for Surrey, Langley SkyTrain translates into new riderships and less cars, and especially less cars on the road. This rapid transit project will connect people south of the Fraser to more housing, employment, schools, services, encouraging higher density, mixed use development all around the SkyTrain stations. The construction of this Surrey Langley SkyTrain will create a large number of solid, well paying middle class jobs that's good for the economy. And this project is shovel ready, so much so that we expect early works to start this Tuesday morning. Mr. Prime Minister and Mr. Premier, thank you for your foresight and I thank you for delivering. Listen to it, it's going to be here pretty soon, you hear it in the background? For, for delivering this much needed project to our city. A promise made, a promise kept by all three levels of government. It's been a long time coming, but Surrey's turn for new rapid transit has arrived. Thank you. It's my great pleasure to introduce our next speaker, somebody who's been a champion for livability and affordability in the city of Langley, Mayor Val Vandenbroek. Well, hello everyone. Um, I'm not sure who's more excited, me or Doug, because <laughs> usually it's me, but it's great to see. So I'm Langley City Mayor Val Vandenbroek, and before I begin, I'd like to state that with an open heart, I acknowledge that I live, work, and play on the traditional and unceded territories of the Kwantlen, Katsi, Masqui, and Semiamu First Nations. I am so excited. I, 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 I can't help myself. Thank you so much. Uh, merci beaucoup pour tout le monde d'être ici aujourd'hui. Um, je pensais que je pouvais parler un petit peu français pour vous. <laughs> merci. So the Surrey Langley SkyTrain extension will significantly impact the lives of Metro Vancouver residents south of the Fraser, Fraser and certainly the city of Langley. The Metro Vancouver region has set a goal of reducing levels of greenhouse gas emissions from 2010 by 45 percent by the year 2030. This SLS project will certainly help to achieve that by offering an efficient transportation option that will reduce vehicle congestion and improve road safety. In fact, this investment will deliver 17,000 tons of annual GHG reductions. This project will greatly benefit the environment and it will reduce the region's dependency on fossil fuels, replacing diesel bus services with an electric service with no operating emissions. That's pretty cool. 
The SLS, which I love to call it, extension is a sustainable and environmentally friendly investment that will improve public health outcomes, including associated reductions in obesity, diabetes, and heart disease. Since most transit trips involve walking or cycling at the start and the end of the journey. We expect that this project will result in 25 million more active transportation trips by 2035. So, it is with great pleasure on behalf of Langley City Council and staff, all our citizens and businesses, we would like to thank the federal and provincial governments for committing to funding this greatly anticipated project in the region and taking the time for being here today for this historical moment. Let's give a shout out. This is so exciting. Now, before I go, I also want to thank the city of Surrey. Mayor McCallum, you have been instrumental in this and your council and I just wanted to send a little shout out to you. I've learned so much through this whole entire process being a new mayor, so thank you. Uh, Township of Langley as well, Mayor Froze, um, we've, three of us have been working really hard on this together and um, it's finally come to fruition, so it's very exciting. I would also like to thank TransLink, all the mayors on the TransLink um, Council uh, and FCM. Um, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities was instrumental as well in the cure congestion campaign which we've been working on for several years. So all that, we've all come together today and we're getting SkyTrain. Woo! Yeah! So it's now my pleasure to introduce somebody who has been no less excited or persistent in championing the Surrey Langley Skytrain project, Mayor Jack Froze from the Township of Langley. Well, how do I top that? Doug McCallum, and you got the beautiful Bonnie Henry shoes on, Mayor Val, and uh, it's hard to top that. But I'm Mayor Jack Froze from the Township of Langley, and I'm honored and privileged to stand here before you. And also, express my great excitement in this project that's, uh, I would like to say long overdue, but these things take time. And uh, I've been mayor for almost 10 years, and uh, I've been pushing for rail to the Langleys for a long, long time, and I'm so happy that we're standing here today. Expanding rapid transit, transit along the uh, Fraser Highway Corridor forms part of the mayor's vision to improve transportation in the region. And one thing I want to mention, that the mayor's vision, it's TransLink Mayor's Council, 23 leaders of local governments in our region got together, formed a vision, and they've stuck through it through two elections, that we have been committed to the vision that we have for the, not just the Surrey, Langley, SkyTrain, but for the entire region. And I want to recognize Mayor Jonathan Cote, the chair of the Mayor's Council of Regional Transportation, and also Mayor uh, Daryl Walker from the city of White Rock are here uh, also. And, but it's, it's a federation of dedicated leaders that brings us here today. And I really want to uh, acknowledge and thank Prime Minister Trudeau and Premier Horgan, all the ministers, all the MLAs, all the MPs, all the staff that have worked tirelessly to get us here today. It is truly an honour to be here. Because we don't do this alone. Before the COVID-19 pandemic, ridership was bursting at the seams. For five consecutive years, Metro Vancouver was among the top regions in all of North America for annual ridership growth. In that five-year period, TransLink's boardings grew an unprecedented 27%, hitting a new record high ridership numbers every single year. And that is something that's truly amazing. Throughout North America, TransLink is a star. And we, have, we in TransLink have been working so hard for all of the region, and it, you can see it by the ridership. Pandemic came along, but it's all coming back. SkyTrain is going to help meet the long-term ridership demand along the key corridors. The proposed extension is projected to serve 62,000 daily riders in the, year, uh, in the year 2035 and grow to 71,000 riders in 2050. And approximately 24 to 30 percent, or thousand of those trips are going to be people who will choose to switch 
to transit from other modes. And that is really our goal, is to get people out of cars and onto sustainable transit. The extension will provide capacity to move 6,800 passengers per hour per direction. And as Minister Heyman said, more than 10 times the capacity of bus service today, with the ability to add future capacity as we grow. So with grade separated tracks, travel times remain consistent. TransLink's on-time performance rate for SkyTrain is 95% or better. I'm proud to be here on behalf of TransLink, on behalf of the Township of Landing Council, on behalf of all the mayors to say this is a great project, long overdue, and really the work just begins today. And thank you very much for all of your support. It's, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce our last speaker and uh, just to take this opportunity to thank uh, Gigi Chen Kuo for her leadership during this pandemic, uh, leading thousands of essential public transit workers to keep hundreds of thousands of commuters safe at every stage of the pandemic during times of uncertainty and now times of hope. So we want to thank you for your leadership, uh, Gigi, and welcome you to say a few words to close us off here today. Thank you, Minister Fleming, for your kind words, and thank you to all of our partners who are here today to mark this milestone occasion. And a special thanks and a warm West Coast welcome to our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau. This is exactly the weather we ordered for you. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that TransLink is privileged to work, operate, and serve on the unceded territories of 10 Coast Salish communities. We are here today to celebrate a momentous step forward in the continued development of our region's rapid transit network, which would not be possible without the generous support of our senior governments. On behalf of TransLink, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to the federal government for its generous funding commitment toward a 16-kilometer extension of the Expo Line from Surrey to Langley City Centre. We are equally grateful to the province for its continued commitment to funding key transportation projects such as this one. This project will serve as a key addition to our regional rapid transit network and will offer commuters a sustainable transportation choice. As a longtime resident of Surrey myself, I've always appreciated the ability to travel around our region efficiently on the SkyTrain system, which is the backbone of our public transit system. Also, from personal experience, I can vouch for the fact that marveling at the view of the Fraser River on the Sky Bridge on my way to work was a fantastic way to start each and every workday. Some people may wonder about the timing of today's announcement. And in fact, um, many places around the world, transit ridership has been down. And Metro Vancouver is no exception. As a result of COVID-19, ridership in urban areas across the world have been impacted, and we are not, not alone. Over the last year and a half, our ridership has dropped to approximately the 40% mark and has remained there for some time. However, I'm convinced that the future is bright. With increasing vaccination rates, the recent move to the province's uh, restart plan, and as well, the anticipated return to campuses and places of work this fall, I'm confident that our ridership will recover and will recover strong. And that's why TransLink is prepared to welcome back its customers to the system. Earlier this week, we launched our ReConnect campaign, which will welcome back Metro Vancouver to our system. I'm optimistic that ridership recovery will grow in leaps and bounds in the months and years ahead because a key component of our region is a robust transportation system. And it's a part of life for all of us who live, work, study and play within this region. Even with shifts toward working from home, our latest modeling suggests that riderships will rebound to between 70 and 90% of pre-pandemic levels by the end of this year. And with Metro Vancouver's population projected to increase by another million residents by 2050, we need to prepare now for the future. We need to continue to advance key regional projects such as the Surly Langley SkyTrain. 
It will better connect our region. It will encourage transit development uh, along its corridors um, in terms of um, development for housing and also enable commuters to have a emission-free, fast, frequent and reliable option to get around the region. Thank you for your time today. This concludes our event. Thank you everyone for being here on such a warm, beautiful day and such a great day for public transit, for green jobs and for community building in this region. I will now turn things over to the Prime Minister's press officer for questions from the media. Thank you, Minister Fleming. As a reminder to everybody on the phone line, please press star one to enter the queue. You are limited to one question and one follow-up only. First question today is from Ian Bailey, Globe and Mail. Uh, Prime Minister, uh, thanks for taking the question. Your former uh, Justice Minister Jody Wilson-Raybould, whom you were involved in recruited into electing politics, has ruled out a re-election big. You can't hear me? I'll let me try again. Um, Jody Wilson-Raybould ruled out a re-election bid this week. She said Parliament is quote-unquote toxic and ineffective, that individuals from certain backgrounds are marginalized, and that one of the challenges facing democracy is the power of the Prime Minister and the centralization of power in the hands of those who are unelected. Um, I'm wondering if you have any concerns, any co sort of comments on her concerns about Parliament in general. Do you have any comment on her concerns about prime ministerial power? Uh, I want to start uh, by recognizing uh, the contributions that uh, Jody Wilson Rabo made to our government, particularly in the early years. We legalized cannabis. Uh, we moved forward on a regime of medical assistance in dying that recognized Canadians' rights. Uh, and uh, we work together on a broad range of important projects. Uh, I wish her the very best in her uh, next endeavors, and I uh, recognize that uh, politics can be extremely difficult and indeed toxic sometimes. Uh, but uh, I also believe that it takes good people to continue to step up both in and outside of politics to make a difference, and I look forward to seeing what uh, uh, so many people who believe in the same kinds of things are going to be able to accomplish together in the coming years. Do you have a follow-up, Ian? Uh, what about her, yeah, I do. Uh, what about her concerns, quote-unquote, about the power of the Prime Minister? I think it is extremely important uh, that we established a government by cabinet once again. We have an extraordinary team of cabinet ministers, many of whom are here today, who've demonstrated time and time again their commitment uh, to moving forward on strong progressive ideals, whether it was Ahmed Hussain and Christia Freeland working uh, together with the government of British Columbia to make sure we announce $10 a day childcare, that it's going to be a reality in the coming years, uh, whether it's the work that Catherine McKenna uh, and others has, have done on getting this tremendous announcement today. Uh, we have an amazing team of strong, diverse leaders in our government and in our cabinet that continue to deliver for Canadians the strong, progressive vision uh, that we know Canadians deserve. Next question is from Richard Zussman, Global News. Uh, Prime Minister, uh, your government announced uh, earlier today that they would be stopping trains going uh, in parts of British Columbia, and through, including through the Lytton area, for 48 hours. Is this an acknowledgement that trains should not have been traveling uh, during such significant heat? And will your government commit to doing reviews into train travel uh, during wildfire season or heat wave, considering we have seen trains start fires, not just in other places in Canada, but other places around the world? I think it's extremely important to always start by recognizing the tremendous hardships gone through uh, by uh, the community of Lytton, by the First Nations communities around. It is absolutely unimaginable the loss that they have gone through and the difficulties uh, and the challenges that they're facing. Uh, I have had a number of conversations with Premier Horgan about the tremendous partnership uh, that is in place between the federal and the provincial government, uh, with the pr provincial government, of course, uh, leading with its extraordinary uh, fire management uh, abilities, uh, but also how important it is to sit down and engage with Indigenous leadership and community leaders uh, to make sure that everyone is included and partners uh, in this. And that's exactly why uh, we've, we're moving forward on uh, bringing Indigenous leaders uh, around the table so that on uh, the support for families right now, 
the rebuilding over the coming months and the long-term relationships that recognize that uh, we're going to continue to face challenges around extreme weather events that we all need to be working closely on. Uh, the work that we're going to be doing today and tomorrow to bring everyone together to give opportunities for people uh, to heal, uh, to begin healing and to move forward, these are the things that we're focused on working together. Follow up, Richard. Uh, I'd like to ask about uh, the announcement around UBC uh, SkyTrain extension, uh, both for the Prime Minister and Premier Horgan. Uh, I know this money is for planning, but th is this an acknowledgement that this is a project that will be built uh, if a Liberal government is re-elected? And, and to the Premier on that regard, uh, will the province come forward with the money needed? Uh, and along those lines, you know, the Prime Minister you know, won't acknowledge this is an election tour, but it seems very much like one. Uh, Premier, uh, for BC NDP voters in Metro Vancouver uh, who may be thinking about who they're going to vote for, who would you encourage they vote for in the federal election? I think the reality is we are here to announce today something with tremendous partners that we have been working on together for many, many years. Uh, it is exciting that we're putting shovels in the ground uh, next Tuesday, and I can tell you uh, that uh, in the eagerness that the local mayors have shown for it, uh, reflections about some perhaps potential maybe uh, federal election were not top of mind. It is about getting things done uh, for Surrey, getting things done for people in Langley City and in Langley. This is the focus that we've had as a government and why we're so delighted to work with partners on it. In terms of transit, as a federal government, we put forward an approach that was there to be a partner with the local experts, and that's what we've done. We have been there to be a partner with the province on its priorities, and we've been there to work with municipalities on their priorities. It is not up to the federal government to draw lines on a map uh, within the Lower Mainland. It is up to us to trust those people who know what their communities need, to, yes, be informed by our extraordinary MPs as partners, uh, but to be there for the expertise and the decisions they've had. And we will continue to do that, including with recently announced permanent public transit funding from the federal government. We are committed to giving that partnership and that clarity so cities and the province can plan not just for the coming year or the coming couple of years, but the coming decades and the coming generations, because that's the future we've got to be thoughtful about and why I'm so excited about it. So uh, with, with respect to the Surrey-Langley uh, SkyTrain announcement, it's been almost 30 years since a dollar has been invested in rails here in the fastest growing part of not just British Columbia, but of Canada. So the timing of the announcement is it's not soon enough, as the mayors have made it abundantly clear. We've been able to collaborate, working with uh, the leadership of John Cote and the, uh, the Metro Board to have a phased plan for developing transit uh, going forward. We are already underway. Uh, Minister Fleming is spearheading with Minister Heyman the expansion of the uh, Millennium Line out to Arbutus, and we will be matching the dollars that are on the table from the federal government to continue and conclude the line all the way out to UBC. These are critical investments. They need to be phased in. That's why we take our direction, as the Prime Minister said, from local governments, the people who have to shape that growth, not chase that growth. We've been going after trying to catch up with the development and expansion in the Fraser Valley for far too long. Now we can get ahead of it and start building the communities that people want to live in. Next question is from Greg Rasmussen, CBC. Uh, question for the Prime Minister. Uh, an historic day this week with the election of Roseanne Archibald as the National Chief of the Assembly of First Nations. Uh, I'm just wondering, do you think this will have an impact on uh, the, your government's relationship with Indigenous people in Canada? And do you have any particular message for her? Chief uh, Archibald, her leadership is uh, going to be tremendous over the coming years. I also want to recognize the tremendous leadership and strength of outgoing National Chief uh, Perry Bellegarde, who has been uh, a true friend uh, to Canada in his commitment uh, to advancing reconciliation and supporting uh, Indigenous peoples and First Nations people right across the country. I look forward to working with Chief Archibald uh, on the issues that matter so deeply, not just to Indigenous Canadians and First Nations people, but indeed all Canadians. 
the challenge of reconciliation is one that we all uh, need to step up on, whether it's orders of government uh, or uh, individual Canadians, business leaders, community leaders. Uh, and I know Chief Archibald is going to be uh, a strong partner, not just for First Nations, but for all Canadians as we move forward on uh, fixing the broken relationships, closing the gaps, and building a brighter future for everyone. Greg, do you have a follow-up? As a, as a follow-up, uh, she takes office amidst allegations of bullying and harassment. Will you be willing to meet with her while those allegations remain unresolved? I look forward to uh, meeting the, uh, the, uh, the chief uh, as soon as possible. Uh, she is uh, been uh, you know, uh, an important. She is going to be an important partner for Canada as we move forward. That's all the time we have today. Thank you, everybody. Merci tout le monde.